Welcome to a quick inside look at WebSense Gateway Optimization. I'm Joel Moses, Product Management Engineer for F5 Networks, and for the next few minutes, as part of the new WebSense F5 partnership, we'll look at a demonstration of several new product integrations. For security professionals, the combination of WebSense products with F5 products is an incredible advantage. Together, these products offer the capability of greater scale and better throughput than competing products alone. But combined with a jointly developed availability monitoring capability and deployment configuration, as well as industry-tested compatibility with the advanced authentication methods like Kerberos, combined F5 and WebSense solutions can be used to create secure environments easily and at the push of a button. And with extensible options like F5's iRules and iControl, WebSense technology is able to take flight in ways that offer real flexibility to security administrators. One of the primary deployment options of WebSense Content Gateway is as an explicit forward proxy. Here we see an example of F5 marshalling a pool of WebSense Content Gateways. The browser clients are configured to connect directly to the F5 virtual server as their proxy. LTM then uses the most efficient WebSense server to handle the connection. This mode is still compatible with authentication single proxy namespace unlike other products. You can configure both NTLM and Kerberos you can achieve transparent user authentication in this way. In order to configure a WebSense Content Gateway pool as a forward proxy, we'll create an application service at the LTM using an IAP. First, we click on the IAP tab, then Application Services, and we'll create one. We'll name it something descriptive. In this case, we'll name it WebSense Test. In the template dropdown, we simply select F5 WebSense Content Gateway. This screen allows us to configure our deployment. In this case, we only need to know a few things. First, we want to enter the IP address that we want our proxy clients to use to access the internet. If we have any specific ports that we want to configure, we can do it here. So we'll create the IP address, and maybe we'll modify the ports. Here's where the flexibility comes in. Normally, routes are required to be created from the WebSense content gateways to the clients that they serve. Here we see a route configuration screen from a WebSense content gateway. Normally, we'd be changing something here, but that's not necessary. Once we've configured IP and routing, all we need to do is configure the addresses of our WebSense servers. We'll go ahead and type that here. These ports are defaults and probably shouldn't be changed. But if you've made changes to your WebSense Gateway installation, you can configure that here. We'll add an additional address. You can add any number of pool members here. With Big IP 11.3, we can also configure what's called TCP queuing. TCP queuing requires that you set a connection limit for each of your pool members. But what will happen is it will allow you to create a policy that alleviates the impact of bursting traffic flows. This will queue connections at the big IP to prevent a proxy from becoming overloaded using the constraints that you as an administrator will specify. In this particular case, we'll select not to queue. Then we configure our monitor. All we have to do is select the software version of the WebSense gateways that we wish to use, or we can create a custom monitor, or we can select from an existing monitor. Once you define your health monitoring interval, then you can click Finish. The result is that all of your installation is created for you automatically. No going in and configuring local traffic uh, VIPs, no going in and configuring monitors. Everything is created. Once the application has been created, you can also go in and remove the application configuration at any time you wish. Or, if you need to, you can simply reconfigure the application at any time. Change IP addresses or add additional WebSense nodes. It's up to you. Another deployment option is as a transparent proxy. This mode allows traffic to pass through the LTM as it travels from VLAN to VLAN, but if it meets certain criteria, like port or destination, it can be rerouted through the WebSense Content Gateway tier without any user interaction. Many enterprises like transparent proxy mode because it requires little, if any, configuration by the clients that it serves. F5 is able to optimize traffic going to the client, as well as maintaining a redundant route path through the WebSense proxy pool. 
That's something very difficult to do with other content scanning products. Let's go ahead and configure a transparent proxy. In this case, we'll pretend like we've decided not to use an explicit proxy and instead we're going to go back in and use the same parameters and the same pool members in order to set up our new transparent proxy. So I'll go ahead into my existing application, WebSense Test, and I'll click on the Reconfigure tab. I'll select to turn off the explicit proxy and instead turn on the transparent proxy. I'm going to define to redirect ports 80 and 443 over towards the proxy and we'll leave the rest of the routing configuration set the same way. You'll notice I didn't have to change anything about my WebSense server pool or my monitor. Uh, I'm going to also change the protocol optimization so that I'm going to inform the system that I'm dealing with clients that are primarily accessible over a wide area network. When doing that, it'll actually create a TCP profile uh, over towards the clients that will optimize the connection uh, to expedite the, co the connectivity that those users experience. When I click Finished, it will automatically create all the components necessary to do a transparent proxy. That's as easy as it is. If I want to get rid of the entire application, I can simply go in and delete everything and now the application has been decommissioned successfully. There's another option in the forward proxy area. Up to this point, our integration with WebSense has actually routed our network traffic through the WebSense proxy. But here's an example where the big IP architecture really shines in combination with WebSense. We can act as the explicit forward proxy, but simply ask WebSense to tell us whether the traffic we're forwarding should be accepted or rejected based on the security policy that resides there. This has the secondary effect of logging all traffic that passes through the Big IP on its way to the Internet into the WebSense Triton logging infrastructure. From there, additional reporting can be obtained. Here we see the Forward Proxy IAP. This IAP allows us to create an HTTP Connect style proxy or a SOX 4, 4A, or 5 proxy, or to create both types simultaneously. This proxy functionality is anonymous, but it allows us to interconnect with URL filtering services on the WebSense engine. First, we configure a virtual server IP address and select the proxy type that we want to serve. If we want to select both Connect and SOX, we can do so, and you can number the ports that they're sitting on automatically. Because we have to resolve external names, we need to create a DNS resolver infrastructure. You can enter the names of any resolvers here, uh, any number of resolvers here, that can resolve external names. In addition, we can specify how long the name lookups will live inside our DNS cache. If you want to restrict things uh, to your proxy, you can define for here uh, which networks to allow to access through the proxy you can add any number of CIDR networks. You can also restrict the ports that are valid. In some cases, the ports uh, required for HTTP sites could be extensive, 8000 or 8080, in addition to the regular port 80. If you want to support that, you can add it here. All you need to do to add URL filtering and inspection is to select yes to URL filtering uh, WebSense support and then enter the server IPs of all the WebSense servers in your infrastructure that you wish to use that have the filtering engine, the filtering service enabled. In addition, uh, this IAP also supports creating proxy auto configuration files. In this particular case, I'm responding to proxy auto configuration requests that come directly to the IP address of my virtual server. I can simply add additional uh, websites uh, that I want to allow access uh, through uh, to bypass the proxy uh, by specifying them here. So I'll configure uh, internal internet.websense.com. When I'm done making modifications, I can click Finish and all of my proxy infrastructure is created in one, uh, in one configuration. So let's go ahead and configure to use our newly created proxy. We'll use the auto configuration script within IE because we've created that as part of our IAP setup. 
I'm just going to select to use an automatic configuration script and I'm going to point it at the proxy and then proxy.pack which is our proxy auto config file. We'll hit OK and we'll access a site like uh, Google. And there it is. We can also access uh, sites through uh, SSL. So here we are going to American Airlines and you see that our certificate trust is still intact. Now then, we're going to test some of the security mechanisms. So I'll go ahead and go to, uh, let's see, we'll go to, um, we'll go to Google. But we'll try to go to Google on a non-standard port, say 8080. As you can see, the proxy now has blocked our port request because it's not on our allowed list of ports. Let's try some advanced use case. Uh, we're going to try to go to uh, a typical domain squatter. Uh, that's usually blocked under uh, security categories. So we'll go to cnn.co, which is a, a common name that some domain squatters uh, out there have used. You'll notice that it automatically reroutes us to WebSense, uh, where it tells us that uh, this category is filtered under park domain. Uh, we're not actually passing through WebSense at this point. Instead, we received the block directly from WebSense via our sideband connection, which has been created from the big IP over to the WebSense filtering service. As you can see, the combination of WebSense security and F5 network know-how is powerful, and that's just the first glance. We've got a lot more coming soon, the integration of our security stories is just beginning, and the really exciting stuff is just around the corner. On behalf of F5 and WebSense, thanks for joining us for this Inside Look.